All right, so I figured after five videos, we would take a break and give just a very short summary and perspective so far. We started with the fact that generalization is data plus knowledge, um, and your knowledge is like restricting to a specific function class. Because if you have, you know, if you have no way to stitch the data together, it's like a bunch of you know random threads. Um, you know, if you have no modeling assumptions, you have no idea where to even start. Okay. And then we learned that uh, for a fixed function f with high probability, the true and empirical risks are kind of on the order of one over root n. Get that from Huffington's inequality. Uh, and then if the function class is finite then with high probability, the worst function in the class, right, the, the soup over all functions of the empirical and true risks differ by um, uh, something on the order of root log m over n. Okay, and this extra term, this log m term, that's there because we want to choose, we want to choose our, model, our, our model in a way that actually depends on the data. So we can't use Huffington's inequality. We have to use the Occam's razor bound or another type of bound that considers the fact that the function is chosen after we look at the data. Okay, now I should mention that the union bound, which we use for the Occam's razor bound, it's in general fairly loose because it, it is as bad as if all of the FJs were independent and we know that they're not, but, um, but that's the way the union bound works. Now, I also should mention that the bound is vacuous when there are an infinite number of functions in the class, because what you, what you would see is that that difference between the empirical and the true risks is less than infinity. And it's like, you know, I mean, you're just saying something's less than infinity. It's, it's you know, thanks a lot. I, I already knew that, right? <laughs> I didn't need all this fancy math to <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> so the math is not actually, um, not, not actually saying anything, right? And so if you think about it, there's, uh, you know, so many cases where the function class is infinite. Like even if you had two dimensional lines, right, there's an infinite number of lines you could pick. So that doesn't mean that, um, that doesn't mean that the, this bound is always useless. It just means that it's useless in most real situations because you have infinite function classes. But don't fear, we're going to construct a better bound for cases where we do have an infinite number of functions.